Hi YouTube, back at the cabin again. It is early September now, I think it's September the 2nd. It's about 28 degrees outside right now, which is beautiful for shorts and a t-shirt. However, at night it's getting down to, I think about eight or nine, which is a little bit chilly. And if you're from Canada or anywhere north, you'll know that uh, those sort of cool nights go to very cool nights very quickly as the fall hits. So this weekend, my plan is to start installing the wood stove. Now when doing a chimney, you really have two options. You can either go up and out through the roof or uh, out through the back wall and then up. I've decided to go up and out through the back wall just because I don't really like the idea of cutting holes in the roof and I've got that sort of lower roof in uh, and I don't wanna have to go through all that insulation and uh, things like that. So that will either be a good idea or a bad idea. Only time will tell. We'll see how the wood stove goes. Uh, once I get it installed and running. I should probably start out by telling you that I'm not actually certified to install a wood stove. So uh, if you are installing your own wood stove, you should probably have a professional do it or research it on your own. Uh, this is simply what I've decided to do here for me. Uh, I originally looked at having a contractor come in or a vendor come in and do my wood stove install, uh, but I just couldn't find anyone in the area that was available. Uh, I tried to buy a wood stove from a few different vendors and again, the first vendor I went to was always closed. Uh, I left messages, called them, they never called me back. There's another wood stove vendor, really big one down uh, south of here, in a little town called Huntsville. Uh, and again, the whole time I was in his store, he really just looked aggravated that I was there at all and spent the entire time I was there trying to sell me a $5,000 propane stove as opposed to a $1,000 wood stove. I have two different products uh, for the stove pipe. Uh, the first one is up uh, to the ceiling and or out through the wall kit and this is made for Canada and the US basically this piece here will run from the top of the stove up to the wall and then if you see over here this is the other kit I've purchased uh, I don't have the box for it anymore but this is the out through the wall kit and together they were about 700 bucks at Canadian Tire which is sort of like a big hardware store slash automotive store here in Canada and I think all my stove pipe, uh, sorry, my chimney pipe was about the same, maybe seven, 800 bucks. So for my chimney pipe, I went with the Dura Plus uh, made by Duravent. It's a very specific uh, product that they made for the Canadian market. This little beauty I found online, it's a Canadian uh, company called Drolette and it's geared towards heating an area of up to a thousand square feet. We're about 400 square feet, so I think we will be more than sufficient. And as you can see, the cabin's a bit of a mess, but we have finished all the insulating now in here, and we are moving on to wood stove installation. And there we go. First burn is going. It's not drafting well when I close the door, it just goes out, but I think it needs the chimney on to help pull the air up and out. Uh, but we're just gonna do a little burn outside here today, see if we can get the paint to cure a little bit. But started up pretty easily once I figured out I had to leave the door open. So I've set up the stove roughly where it's gonna go. I've put the stove pipe on. Uh, I've put the extending piece, which is this guy right here, at about half height. That way it has, you know, four or five inches of movement up and down as required. I'm just trying to get an idea for where. The symbol there is gonna fit through the wall. That's the outside piece. There's also an inside piece. Uh, next step is to frame it out. And I'm gonna work on that now. Okay, so it's the next morning. I built the standoff. It is gonna sit about like that. So now is the time I've been dreading. It's time to cut a hole in the side of the cabin. I hate doing this, but it has to be done. So I'm gonna start out with drilling uh, four small holes, enough to get the jigsaw in, then I'll run the jigsaw up both sides and across. I'm not gonna be able to get the jigsaw close enough to the stud in the wall on the inside, so I'll have to go outside to finish the cut. Hopefully this works. And this also lets me go and look outside and see roughly where it's gonna come out on the outside wall. Oh boy. 
Hello. Okay. Got more sawdust in my eyes now than I can even believe. Guess I should have brought my safety glasses. And there she is. I have all four corners uh, attached in now. Just use some self-topping screws. Need a silicone around the edge. And that is it from the outside for now. Moving back inside. So now that the outside sleeve is coming through, I can attach the uh, the framing that I built and then we can hook on the inside sleeve portion. So we've installed the frame now. Uh, next thing is to put the inside portion is, this is a slip fit, so it can go anywhere from I think seven inches to 12 inches. Uh, I'm gonna install it then once we put on, probably gonna have three quarter ton and groove pine here. We're gonna have to slide it out a bit more. So let's see how easily this slides in here. Take a little bit of finagling perhaps. There we go. And that's gonna sit about like that. I'm gonna angle it so that I can connect into my beam here and here. And there we have it. So the stove pipe will come through here and it will tie in with this piece, there's another collar piece, and then that piece will come in and then go down to the stove. So fast forward one week, back at the cabin, back to try to finish this fireplace slash chimney install. Had the boys in the shop modify the brackets again for me. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize that when I was sizing them up, the size you need is only partially dictated by the distance you need to come off the wall. You need to be two inches from combustibles, but the main factor is the piece of pipe that fits through the thimble. And because in my case, I'm using this two foot piece, I needed to come off the wall about another four or five inches. So the brackets, as you can see here, have been modified with this piece. So hopefully this will work this time. Okay, so I have the brackets on. Next step will be to slide the chimney piece that goes through the wall bracket in, and then make the connection to the vertical piece that's gonna go up straight up this way. And then I'll make the connection onto the brackets here. And we'll see how it all looks. It's gonna, if the thimble will have enough strength just to support it on its own, if I put it in far enough. Oh, sucker's heavy. Got it if you can get hold the ladder, love. That looks better for position, that's for sure. Up a touch. Okay, so it's secured. It's the weight of it is being supported by the bracket now. So let's go inside and let's see roughly if it's coming out the distance we want. Then we can mess around with fine tuning it after. Okay, so as you can see, there's the chimney pipe coming through the wall. So we just have to set our distance uh, here. Uh, minimum distance here is five inches and we're just gonna try to line that up with the stove pipe. So this is really just a test fit. This obviously, this piece is gonna come up. We just wanna get a feeling for how close I am to it. So I need to go back a couple of inches or pull the stove forward a couple inches, either one. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna pull it back. And then we might have to find adjust the stove after. But babe, can you tell me when I get back to about six inches? Okay, stop filming. All right, so with the stove pipe coming through the wall, the flange piece goes on and then this guy here will slide in and make the connection and then line up with the stove pipe coming out of the top of the stove. And there you have it. So we come up, there's a, uh, there's a transition piece into a stove pipe, into an adjustable piece, into an elbow, into 
the connector and the sleeve and the piece of chimney pipe. All right, greetings from the roof. Had to climb up on the roof to get the last piece and the cap on. Uh, there's my feet. I still need to secure these guys uh, to the roof. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that yet. I may just use the existing ones uh, that are fastening uh, the sheeting for the roof down for now. Uh, and then the chimney is installed. And I just wanted to point out that that cap piece just slips over the last piece of chimney and has a single screw in it that just tightens up uh, to hold it into place. And there you have it. I'll tell you what, uh, standing on that roof, when the sun hit the metal roof, it became super slippery. I couldn't stand on there. I kicked my shoes off to try to get a little more uh, positioning with my feet. And then all my tools started sliding off. It was actually like a bit of a gong show up there, but it's not perfectly level. It's pretty close, but uh, those beams at the top are adjustable. Uh, I was able to tie into uh, a couple of the mounting pieces, uh, screws, I'm sorry, that just uh, they use for the roof sheathing to attach uh, the connectors to. And I just re-siliconed around the edges of them. So I'm thinking we're pretty good to go now. So that is the wood stove installed. Wasn't as tricky as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the kits are actually pretty good. The only thing that is odd is that bracket you can see there in the background that I had to modify. I don't know if anyone would be able to use it at the stock size they actually give it to you at. Anyway. Fortunately, uh, we were able to get it installed. Oh, there she is. That's going to be it for today, guys. Uh, I'll leave some links around the screen here to other videos we've done uh, about working here at the off-grid property. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that subscribe button. It just helps us uh, grow the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.